Hey guys, so we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, you know, it's still in the heart of gaming, but what we're going to do is we're going to build something to make it a little bit more fun while gaming. It's going to be a table that fits on top of your regular table to give you an elevated tabletop for gaming. So <clears throat> this is my garage. A uh, little bit of a mess right now. I've got other things that I'm doing as well, you know, trying to get my ATV fixed and, you know, this is a little bit of a mess, but, you know, <sighs> I do have enough room, at least I can get some work done today and we're gonna make this thing for playing our board games and whatnot, you know, to give us more space on our available tables and also to basically turn a normal table into a gaming table. I've got some felt that I'm gonna use. Now, the, the felt that I'm using is actually uh, made to be like an underlay for driveways and stuff, but it's still decent enough, right, that when you roll dice, or when you want to pick up cards, it's easier to do than a flat, hard surface that most regular tables have. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use this board here. And now this is like just a, a 1 8 plywood. Uh, now, as you can see, that's pretty flimsy, right? So, we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to create a frame for this. We're going to create it by uh, 32 by 42 inches, which is a fairly decent size for any regular map or any board game that you're going to play. And once I've cr basically cut out that size on the table saw, right, then what we're going to do is we're going to take some other material and we're going to create basically ribs for it to keep it rigid, keep it strong. Glue it and tack it together, right? Put a felt over it, and then we're gonna create a, um, a border that goes around the edges that will kind of clean it up so you'll see that the material will go tucked in underneath, but yet the rail will still be over top. So maybe we'll do a little bit of a stain or we'll paint it so that it looks nice as well. If I've got some leftover oak or something, you know, I think that'll look pretty good. Um, lastly, it's also going to have legs on the backs or the underneath of it. You know, I figure probably about four inches. You know, I don't want it to be too high, right? That you're having to look at your game like this, right? So about four inches or so, uh, the legs are only going to be a maximum of say 28 inches in the width. So there'll be a little bit of an overhang and probably um, with the legs going this way, uh, probably at about 38 inches, leaving that little bit of an overhang. But then that way the legs are definitely going to fit onto any other table. And because it's very thin, it's going to be very light, so it'll be easy to pick up and move around. And I might make it so that the legs are detachable, so you can easily just take them off. Right, so you can store it in a closet or behind a couch or something when not being used. Right, but I think this is going to be a very cool project. This is going to be my demonstration project. And who knows, if it works out really good, maybe I'll go some, buy some really nice felt and make a, um, a really decent table. Right, that, uh, anyway. Let's give this a shot and see what we can do. All right, so let's have fun begin. So the first thing I have to do is we're gonna to have to set up our table saw to be able to make the two cuts. We're gonna make it 42 inches by 32. I'm thinking 32 might be a little bit wide, but we're gonna go with it this is just basically a trial run and regardless it's still gonna be a nice table like so it's just uh, gonna be a quick go because it's the first one making it so here we are I'm just getting things ready for the first cut this is gonna be our 42 inches and don't forget safety glasses that's important safety first and here we go 
So, 42 inches. Bam, just like that. Now flip it around, and we're gonna cut our 32 inch. So now we got our first dimension cut, now it's just a matter of setting up for our second one, which is gonna be the 32 inches. I just gotta move my fence along there. You know, this is an old table, but it still works good. You know, I can't just set it with a, a little thing that's on the fence anymore, but hey, she's bang on. So here we go, just gonna pull this back, fire it up, and we'll get our second cut made. Now this material is actually, it's great to use for many things. You can even glue it together because it's so small, right? But I even use this for uh, making my paint holders, my paint trays and stuff too. So moving right along, now that we've got the base part of the table made, we need to start reinforcing and making our railings going around it as well. So here I found it looks to be a perfect chunk of oak which is going to be nice and strong. We're going to cut that into strips to make this work. We'll cut some wider strips, probably a half inch around the edges and some thinner ones to go around the bottoms of the edges to strengthen it all up. So here we go, just gonna set the fence. We're gonna do this at half an inch and we're gonna give her a go and get those all cut up and then we'll do some little quarter inch pieces for strengthening the bottom of the sheet after this probably have just enough wood to do it. There we go. Now we just reset the fence and bring that down to a quarter. So this is getting pretty thin. So I use my own um, push stick for this. It is made out of wood. So I find that right here, when I push that through, so how thin that is, if my wooden push stick is just a little too thick, it'll just take it down to the thinness that it needs to be anyway. If I use plastic, it just obliterates it. So now that I've got all the pieces made to make the borders and the strength in the bottom, it's a matter of measuring them out and getting them to fit. So a couple quick measurements, bring it over to my saw here and cut them up and get them ready. Now here's the felt. Now this is like I said this is actually a specially designed felt that you would normally put as an underlay before you put your driveway down so that your soils don't mix. And I'm going to use it for a game table. <laughs> It's actually, it's not bad. I've been using it for a while. For my table that I have for Gloomhaven, uh, it works well. So I put glue on both sides. I'm clamping down those quarter inch pieces of oak that I made. And once I get them clamped down, I'm gonna ram through five eighths
broad nails. Now, 5 eighths, obviously, that's going to go clean through. But that's okay. This is just a thin board. I'd like to try and keep it light. So, what I do is I purposely make it so that these go through, and then I just bend them over with my hammer. And that really sandwiches it together, and it's not coming apart. I want to try and keep that material nice and tight on top. Cut the excess off here so it's nice and clean. And there's the first side done. Now we're just going to do the same on the other three sides. Now I've got these awesome big clamps, and I use these right here. Uh, so that I can just actually make sure that I hold everything nice and tight. So that's cool, now I've got the two longer sides done. So let's flip this around and start working on the short sides. Measure out, cut pieces. Get her clamp, glue her down, and just repeat the same thing again. go. Ta-da! <laughs> so I think that's going to look pretty good. So that's held in there really well. Like that could be just thrown on a table just like that and you've got like a nice flat surface to work on where you can play cards and it's easy to pick them up and dice will roll nice. But we're going to take it a step further yet. So first we're going to make these rails or the edge of it. As you can see, you know, just kind of trim it up, it'll make it look nice with the oak. So, we're gonna just shape these up, cut them up, and we're gonna glue and use uh, a stapler to actually put them together. The staple will actually probably go through both of the material of the little quarter inch piece that I put underneath and the board so that'll also help to hold those together too. I'm just using the clamp to hold the board down flat to make sure that it attaches properly. And there's the first piece. Now the other reasons for actually putting these on is also because it's going to stiffen the whole board right up. As you can see that when I put this clamp down, that it flattens the board out and then when I staple the, the rails in, it holds it flat in that position, keeps it nice and straight. So that's going to be an important 
factor to making this an actual flat surface to work to be able to play games on. You can see it wowing up right there. It's got kind of like a curve. So once I put these last two rails on the on the ends, you can see as I'm pushing it down there, right? That's going to hold that nice and flat. Then when I put the rails underneath that I'm going to put the legs on, that'll finalize making sure that it stays nice and flat and it'll be a great uh, play service. Now here's our bottom rails. Now these, what I'm actually going to do is I'm measuring it out so I know exactly where to staple through. Put some glue, clamp the edges down, and we're going to flip it over and I'm actually going to put broad nails right through the top and in. The thing is, is that the broad nail heads are so tiny and they go through so nice and flush, you don't even see them. really you don't need a lot because it's really to hold it there once that glue settles it's gonna be solid it's never coming off there anyway that Gorilla Glue really does work well so we do that with the second one here and then we're ready to throw some legs on couple more and there we go beautiful see even that just on its own you could throw that on a table just like that just so that you have a gaming table on any regular table a dining table you know whatever you just want to play cards right or uh, you've got a dice game like zombie dice or something you want to play you know it, it'd be perfect for that but I'm gonna add these little legs now I was gonna make it so that they fold down but for now I'm just doing this quick I'm just going to staple them in. I can easily pull these off and change it later. Because I want to make it so that it's actually raised for the type of games we're playing to give more available space on our table as well. And there she is. Awesome. See, so it gives us space to have our drinks, our characters and other things under the table or around the sides of it. And the board on top. It's pretty awesome. Makes it easy to pick cards up. Makes it a little quieter and nicer for playing dice. This is Arcadia Quest set up on there right now. It's perfect. 
The only thing else I'd probably need to do is install some lighting underneath, just some LED lights. You can see how easy it is just to pick up and move cards around. They don't slide so easy. Even the board, it stays in place. So it's perfect. I'm looking forward to playing. So there it is, guys. That's the board. If you like, please subscribe, hit that like button. Any ideas, leave some comments. Uh, you can also look at look up Basic Painter on Facebook. Um, you know, other than that, until next time, we'll see you then.